live wire review. Today we've got a new one here. We got a 2024 Rivian R1T. I'm Jeremy and this is Wes. Wes, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Wes Aranto. I'm uh, from the Wes Aranto real estate team. Uh, we focus on the Simcoe and County area. And uh, yes, welcome to my truck. Yeah, so you traded in a Model 3 Performance for this one. And what is this one? This one's the R1T quad motor, 835 horsepower, 908 pound-feet of torque. And I see you've got the road-going tires and the 21-inch wheels here. And you can tell it's the quad motor from those nice yellow calipers behind the wheel there. Well, one of the things everybody wanted to know about this truck was the payload. And the payload on this truck is 1,764 pounds. So it can actually haul quite a bit of stuff. There is a four and a half foot bed and it extends down to a seven foot bed with this neat little extender here. Now it does have this flip up cover and a very unique hinge design. The only caveat we found with that is that a little bit of sticks and stuff will actually end up underneath. So maybe one of the maintenance things you'll have to do in the future is actually take off that undercover and clear out some of the brush. But that's the only downside I can see to that. Now the other thing everybody wanted to know about was the towing. Being an electric truck, towing is always the number one question that I get on this channel. And I'm gonna pass that over to Wes and he's gonna answer those questions. Thank you. Yeah, so one of the reasons I actually was very interested in the truck being the fact it's more closer to a midsize than a large full-size F-150 in the sense of uh, size is that it does have a towing capacity of 11,000 pounds, which is extremely high for something in this size and category. Um, but having said that, it does dramatically limit range. It sure um, does. So if you're towing anything from that nine to 11,000 pound range, you know, you're gonna have a fair amount of wind resistance and challenges. So, I mean, your realistic range is probably in that 150 to 170 kilometer type range. Um, but for me, uh, I do a lot of tow towing uh, with the uh, dump trailer and my landscape trailer. And in that situation, uh, those actually, A, you get a lot better distance on significantly more because they're not pushing the weight or the wind resistance aspect. Yeah, they're a lot lower. A lot lower. Yeah. Um, and so the thing is, and because most of that driving is shorter distance, it's not an issue that way for me. And I don't know if I'd get 250, 300, but probably in those types of ranges is what I'd expect having those loaded. Um, one thing maybe worth noting is that the hitch is integrated in. You just have to pop off the bottom panel. Uh, all the Rivians come with it integrated in. And of course, an electronic integrated brake controller is built into the system and software. Well, that's pretty handy. So 11,000 pound top towing, you can expect maybe 150 to 170 in the heavy ranges, 200 to 300 with the lighter trailers. Like I've said before in a lot of my videos, I think an electric pickup truck does fit about 80% of the use cases on the market. And this one's no different. Now this one's aimed more as an adventure vehicle, but it can still do truck stuff. Trust me, it can. And the one thing I will say is that I, uh, so I do have a very large camper trailer, like two slide outs, 32 foot long, yeah. of course. You know, Now that one, if you're gonna tow it across the country is a bit of a different story, you know, isn't for it? For sure. And so the thing is, unless I was towing short, I would go to my trusted and reliable Ford Expedition Max yep. with the heavy duty tow package on it. Um, it's, it's a more appropriate vehicle, I would argue, especially for longer trips. Yes. As soon as you're getting over 200 plus, I'm pretty confident I'd go to the Expedition. And now we're gonna talk about the range. The one thing that everybody wants to know about electric vehicles. Starting off in the city, you can expect about 442 kilometers worth of range. On the highway, you can expect about 384 kilometers. And the combined figure is just about the same as the Kona EV at 415 kilometers of range. Anything you wanted to add about that? Uh, just uh, since I've had it, uh, it actually tracks since I started driving in sports mode, highway mode, and conservative mode. It actually tracks all three uniquely yeah. uh, when you put it in the modes. And so right now, uh, sports mode is close to 500. Uh, highway is slightly over 500 is what it says for the estimated range. And then my conservative has it actually right now at 560 kilometers of distance based on my driving to date. Wow, so like if you baby the truck or if you change your driving style, you can actually expect quite a bit more than the realistic figures that we got off the website there. And even driving here, I actually had better uh, range uh, consumption than I expected based on the start of the trip. So I actually added about 10 kilometers in total distance by the time I arrived from when I was supposed to. Yeah, it's probably because it's not that full-size truck. It's a little bit lower, has a little bit better aerodynamics. So you should be able to do a little bit better with this truck than some of the other ones on the market.
Okay, so now we're at the front of the Rivian and we're gonna talk about some of the features, starting with the frunk. And as Wes said, there's a couple different ways you can open this. Yeah, so obviously you can use the app on your phone. Uh, that's probably a key one. Uh, they all come with this nice carabiner style key, uh, which of course then double clicking it um, will open it. As well as down here, there's a manual open as well. Well, that's handy to have a manual open. I know there's a couple of situations where I've seen a latch not work and you want that second way to open it up. Absolutely. And I did bring a floaty for us to try the compressor out later. So <laughs> uh, see how good it is. It's kind of cool sounding feature. Um, so inside you have a landing and a storage bag, which fits stuff. And then the landing, if you need more space, you actually can you might have to give it to you there for a second. Yeah. You can flip it back, put it up, and it There's gets pretty deep. That's pretty cool. There's actually more storage space in there than we thought, hidden underneath the cover. Yeah, and yeah. so for me, that'll fit a solid set of golf clubs or whatever you need, or a few sets, so. And then the manual close on it. Oh, cool. That's three ways you can open and close it. And there you go. Cool. Yeah, and we got the charging port over here on the one side. Yep, and you just three, just touch the sensor, flips it open, and you've got the low and high speed charging option, obviously. Yeah, now I had a couple of comments from people online and they actually said they didn't like it on the front. I am a very strong believer that all charging ports should be on the front because it's so much easier just to pull straight into that spot. Well, and the one thing I will say, especially if you're trailering, it's a must for me. Oh if, God, yes. If you're on the road trailering, if you don't have that option, you'd have to literally disconnect, uh, would be a huge problem. Yeah, so that means that's actually gonna be really handy for towing. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Okay, so moving on with some more of the features, Wes is gonna talk about the gear tunnel now. Yeah, so uh, gear tunnel release is just up here. You bring it down. This can handle over 250 pounds, so it is meant to be stood on so you can get up here and deal with the roof if you want to move the uh, racks up, for example. All right, and it does open on both sides. It is a full pass-through, and the nice thing is from inside, you actually can access the gear tunnel. So, for example, if you put a cooler in there, you can access it. The kids can go and grab drinks out and pull it out themselves. Yeah, so unlike some vehicles that don't even come with a frunk, this one comes with a gear tunnel and a frunk and a storage space in the rear of the bed that flips up, correct? Yeah. Plus then once my manual tunnel cover arrives, I'll have more storage back there. And one more cool feature here, this is where the compressor kit is wow. for the air compressor in the back. I didn't even know that was there. That's really neat. It actually helps to have an owner come out and show you some of the features on the vehicle. So one of the things we always cover is the back seat because a caveat that I have about vehicles is I have to be able to fit in the back if I'm gonna buy it, even though I'm never gonna be there. I'm six foot one inches tall and let's see how this works. Okay, so we're here in the back seat of the Rivian R1T and it looks like I have a fair amount of room here. If I put my head right back, just my hair is touching the Alcantara headliner here. Now, that's only if I hold my head against the headrest. So sitting normally, my head does not touch the roof. And there's a beautiful view back here. We have a full glass panel on this roof, just like a Tesla vehicle, but there is no bar in the way of this one. So there's excellent view outside here. And we have a physical door handle on the door. Some other things that I see in here are beautiful buckles here for the back seats and they look incredible and there's even a little screen for the back with USB-C charging there's even USB-C charging in the back seat headrests which I think is pretty cool outside of that it's pretty standard back here I believe the controls for the heated seats are going to be on this screen and you even have vents for the heat so pretty nice place to be Okay, so here, back here, trying out the compressor, make sure it works. Um, so, compressor's up here. Uh, this is the cable that comes with, that comes out of the bag. Quick release attachment. Okay, you can set the PSI amount, and you can set whether it's on or off. I believe I have it on. If not, I'll just turn it on. Yep. Works just fine. It also comes with different adapters in the bag. Um, obviously you'll need some different ones depending on what you're trying to blow up, but I can say it works. For those of you wondering what are those little knobs below, 
there's a lock cable in the front. So I can put the lock cable on and then as soon as the truck locks, that lock cable locks in there. So I have something value in the bowl in the bed that I'm worried about being stolen. I can just clip it into there and it'll lock with the vehicle. So just wanted to quickly talk about the power it comes with. It comes with two standard plugs. It does not come with a 30 amp plug. Uh, these would run at about 1500 watts. Uh, basically the idea to them is to use standard appliance type stuff, but they do have limitations. Um, Probably not quite as nice as the Ford's fancy version, but it is a good start and probably good enough for what I need. Just a couple fun features. I know they're not a big deal, but rechargeable flashlight in the door. Nice feature to have, especially if you, based on the adventure aspect of it. You know, it's nice to be able to have stuff like this. I know it's just a bit of fun, but it's good to have it. And the other one really nice feature is that the Bluetooth speaker that's built in that then obviously, oh, just connected, obviously. Uh, great to be able to just go and enjoy a campsite and play a little music. Obviously charges off the truck like uh, everything else. So it's just nice to have that feature that you can then have that portability. And uh, yeah, just a bit of fun with the Rivian. Okay, we're in the 2024 Rivian R1T. I'm pretty excited, let's go for a drive. So fun fact about the, my Rivian, is that I received it within 10 days of finishing production in Illinois. Really? That's actually pretty quick delivery time. Yes. So I haven't had time to look this up, but uh, I asked a couple people around me, what did you want to know about the Rivian? And one of the biggest concerns actually with a new car company was where do you get it serviced? Where are the dealerships? Yes. Well, right now in Ontario, the only one I'm aware of is the one in uh, Vaughan. It's uh, the, the only dealership that exists right now. Okay, I've actually had to go to Vaughn for one service on my Tesla, so it's a, it's not too far for most people, but let's say you live out in Sudbury or something like that, a service visit is going to be a little more fun. Yeah. Now, I will say, I we, in Barrie, we are in the um, uh, concierge range, so they will come and drive to you to come fix it. That's good. So they have like a mobile service Correct. team. That's excellent. Yes. I had a couple of mobile service visits, and I got to say, they were pretty handy. So I've done a little bit of research on this truck before we got in here. I know that you can get air suspension, quad motor, this is the quad motor pickup, and you have up to six inches of uh, clearance that you can change with that air suspension. And I know in the highest mode, you get 15 inches of ground clearance, which is just insane. So driving dynamics, Wes, you've had this for a few days. What do you think of the truck so far? Uh, first of all, it does not drive like a truck start there yeah uh, it rides on rails much like my Tesla did um, so I find the drive quality very good um, sports mode I if I'm on a, we're more on a country road style right now I would reduce it to the normal stiffness from being stiff yeah um, and then if you are like trying to race off the line you want to have it in the lowest setting that's a rough ride you're, yeah you know you're not gonna want to keep it there for long <laughs> now so. I, I have heard that about this truck now one thing you have to keep in mind this truck weighs seven thousand pounds the curb weight of this truck is seven thousand pounds it's it's insanely heavy it's actually in the three quarter ton truck range so even though it has air suspension there's only so much you can do about the stiffness of the ride. If you've been following the Ionic 6, you'd actually find that because of the extra weight of the battery and the fairly low ride center of gravity, they're having trouble with the suspension when it comes to stopping. So the front tires actually skip a little bit in, in wrong conditions. So dealing with that weight is always an issue, but do you think they've sorted it out fairly well outside of that little bit of stiffness? Honestly, actually, if you put it in the soft mode, it rides great actually i can't believe it i actually would even argue it rides as smooth if not smoother than my tesla did which for me is a big thing because i was very happy with my tesla so yeah um, i was actually super impressed i mean the stiff basically it feels more like a truck is the way i'd put it yeah and then on the like stiffest like the lowest setting then you know you don't want to hit expansion joints that, yeah, okay, I, I agree with that. I did enjoy the suspension of my Tesla as well. We've always liked a, a firmer ride that's really good around corners. And I love that chassis. There we go, no problem getting up to 90 up that hill. 
<laughs> no, it's uh, actually, it is faster than my Model 3 performance off the line. Yep. Uh, which in itself is an interesting statement. Yeah, it's being amazing. A truck, <laughs> being a truck. A 7,000 pound truck going 0 to 60 in 3 seconds flat. And your old car was what, around the 3.1 to 3.2 second range? Yeah, you actually can feel the difference though. Yeah. Uh, I actually was surprised I could, but actually it uh, drops your stomach a little more. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so we're riding in the quad motor. That's 835 horsepower and 908 pound-feet of torque. Uh, we have um, an old F250. My dad's got an F250, and it has 650 foot-pounds of torque. And it'll pass a car while towing a large trailer with a truck on the back of it. So I couldn't imagine what this would do while towing a trailer. You'd just surprise everybody you're driving by. Yes, well, I did see a... Uh great video where they put the s10 on the back of this truck yeah. in a trailer and it beat the ford raptor wow in the quarter mile while towing the s10 on the back that's incredible <laughs> so yes it's a ridiculous performance i believe this one has the 138 kilowatt battery it's the large battery i think that's the right stat on it but yeah, we'll put the correct figure on the screen once we figure that out i did look this up there was four different battery packs but this one was only available with the second from the top correct. you couldn't get the top top battery because i think with the quad motor setup they just couldn't fit it in here that's only available with the dual motor if i'm correct uh that is correct yeah yeah and uh, I did originally because I've been on the I was on the waiting list for so long. Originally, they I did have it saved with the max battery over the large battery. Yep. But they discontinued it as an option. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but how much more was that battery? I hear we were talking in the range of like sixteen grand to get the max battery pack. I, I think when I did it, based on how many years ago I did it, I think it was ten. But yes, I okay. think you're correct. Now I think it is. Yeah. So you wanted to talk about price. I know you can get a Rivian R1T here in Canada. I'll put the U.S. figure down below obviously $105,000 is where the dual motor regular R1T starts at and this configuration we're in today is $132,000 Canadian that's not the case for you because you ordered this truck quite a while ago I take it uh, yes so I was uh, noticeably below uh, uh, the six-figure mark is sort to give a price variance yep um, so that's a pretty big differential there that is that means you went over 30k above yeah, that's more incredible. Closer to 40 differential. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, when I first spec these out, I think it was what in the 94k range. Uh, yeah. So I got the original early bird pricing. Yeah. Uh, which definitely, I mean, is why you probably see someone on some of them on Auto Trader on driven or driven very little, is they're just trying to flip them for profit. I assume. Well, yeah, because they just got their trucks now. I get it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. I will say one of the cool things for me is I believe I'm one of the first people with the white exterior and white interior in Ontario. Yeah. Um, just because that's what I waited for. And uh, it's uh, I'm very happy with the color match on it, like how it looks inside and out, so. I'm really impressed with the interior materials here, but I would expect that in a 100K luxury off-road adventure vehicle, if I'm saying that correctly. Now there are some familiar things in here. You got the giant screen right in the middle. I see your scroll wheels on the steering wheel. So there are a lot of hints here from Tesla, of course, but the materials that are surrounding me, there is stitching everywhere. There's beautiful, looks like real wood here it in is the real dashboard. Wood, yeah. Oh, this is beautiful in here and this, uh, this nice metal trim in here. But this is the kind of thing I would expect in a truck of this class. And just the headrests and the seats and the suede or so, sorry alcantara interior it is absolutely gorgeous in here yeah I, I the features on it i love it for me would be probably definitely a significant step up from my model 3 in that aspect yeah and i mean i love my model 3 you know i did but uh, it is cool and it's it's funny when you're like it really is wood <laughs> yes yeah, it really the, is because their whole concept right was to bring nature inside and, and you know the adventure aspect of it right so i love how the uh, they kept with that theme with it yep so I know there's some great features in this truck, like especially when it comes to off-roading. If you're into off-roading, this is the electric truck to get. It can wade through three feet of water, if I'm correct with that figure. You can raise your ground clearance to 15 inches with that air suspension. And with a quad motor setup, you don't need locking differentials. It's programmed into the truck. And I don't know if they'll come out with it again, but they had that tank turn. I don't know if the software has been released for that or if they will. So we'll ch check that out with your truck when you go to buy it and see with your sales representative if that's still available. 
Okay, everyone, we're coming to the end of this video. We're gonna wrap up our thoughts on the Rivian R1T, at least for today. Like we said, we're gonna be doing a couple more videos on this truck in the future as Wes owns it for a little bit longer. Now, he wanted to cover a couple of quirks just as we end here. Yeah, so one of the weird parts is with the nice wood dash, um, one of the challenges, unfortunately, becomes there's no glove box. But what it does come with is a secret compartment in both the front seats um, so you can stash stuff like that you would normally put in the glove box there. But it is one of those weird features. The other thing is because it's so new, development of features for the glove, for the main box and for the store air, storage area mm -hmm. uh, aren't fully developed out. So there's a lot of 3D print sites and stuff like that. And people on Amazon starting to offer those types of accessories, which are quite valuable. So. Yeah. And we already showed the racks here and how they move to the top. I thought that was pretty cool that they're sliding racks so they can go from one to the other. And I'm sure you can get four bars all together. You can. It's one heck of a customizable vehicle. So yeah, wrapping up our thoughts here. One thing I wanted to mention is the handles are facing the correct direction. I know it's kind of silly, but the Ionic ones that are facing out backwards like this, I still haven't got used to them. And I work at Hyundai, so it drives me nuts. I like the fact that these are where I expect them to be and they pop out. So a little better than Tesla, a little better than Hyundai, just in my humble opinion. Anything else you wanted to add before we leave? No, I'm just, I'm very excited about the truck. Obviously I've been on the, I was on the wait list for many, many years. I was at the New York launch of it back in, I think 2019, 2020, got to meet the CEO and all that type of stuff before any production even began. So it was a ton of fun to see it come to life and to see the changes that occurred from the original design. Yeah, and it looks like it worked out in your favor ordering it back then. You get it for what, like 94K Canadian, I think? I think a little less, yeah, yeah, so. Wow, yeah. that's a pretty good deal for you, Wes. So right now though, this truck is sitting at 132, like we mentioned on our test drive. And I think that we'll just wrap up there. So if you like this video, thanks for watching, like and subscribe, support the channel, and see what we're doing next.